Hi everybody, my name is Caitlin and I'm an outpatient director in Palm Beach. Today I'm going to do a training for you so that you can learn how a director audits a chart when we have an audit. Uh, all of our supervisors in Chrysalis are going to get this little cheat sheet and it's a little uh, example of how you can go through some bullet points and figure out exactly how to audit a chart. So as you can see here, we have consents. This is one of the first things we look through in a chart. Every chart has to have a combined consent form. The combined consent form is done usually at assessment, but it can be done also if a client's been with services for over a year or if they've been readmitted. Um, what we check is that the guardian information is checked off, that there's a PCP name and address and signatures. Um, sometimes clients have a pediatric associate doctor, and if so, they need the pediatric consent form done. Uh, during assessments, all clients get an outpatient program verification. So that's this one right here. Uh, this is just saying that they've received the outpatient packet. So most assessors will have that signed before the client comes to you as a therapist. Um, if they're a substance abuse client, they're going to have consent for alcohol and drug testing. Again, that would be done during assessment. But if you change your client's diagnosis to having a substance abuse diagnosis, you would need to get this um, consent form signed. Um, and then finally, all adults have the Behavioral Health Advance Directive. And all that means is that at Chrysalis, we have to let our adult clients know that they have the right to have an attorney appoint someone to make mental health decisions for them in case they're not able to do so. That is also a form the assessors get signed. And finally, the consent for telehealth services is the last consent form um, that the assessor is going to have signed by the client, just saying the client's okay with telehealth services. So now, if I go into ECR, here's our sample chart, and here is where I'm going to start auditing my consent forms. In ECR, you can drag um, this little area to the side if you want down here to see the whole name. But here's the combined consent form. And so I'm going to open it up, and I'm going to see that here it says the client is under 18, and I'm the biological parent, and the, the proof of my guardianship is that there's a photo ID. Sometimes it's going to be ChildNet or another uh, entity that might be the guardian, and it would be clicked here that ChildNet um, is a legal guardian, but they're not the parent. And so they may have a child welfare worker ID or guardianship order, court order, adoption order, something like this that's not just the normal picture ID. So I see that there is a picture ID here, so I just want to make a mental note. I'm going to check that it actually is uploaded into the chart when I'm finished with this form. My second tab is where it talks about the doctor's information that we have consent to reach out to the doctor. So here you can see we have a pediatric associate doctor, which means there should be a pediatric consent form signed. And when we communicate to the doctor, we need that PCP fax form to have this exact information on it. Limits, no limitations to this consent. Most of the forms will always say that. Um, these are all pretty standard from the assessor, and everything has been signed. So we're good here with that consent form. I'm going to keep going down, and this is not a substance abuse client. They only have a mental health diagnosis, so none of the other consents are needed. Um, but here is the pediatric associate consent form, because remember, they have the pediatric associate doctor, so everything is signed here, and that's good. So um, I do want to just quickly scroll down to collateral to make sure I have that guardian's ID, and sure enough, here it is. You can see anything with this little blue arrow has been uploaded into the chart. So here's the guardian ID, and it's been uploaded. I can double-click that, hit the exit button, and... It's not going to let me print it, but normally the guardian ID picture will show up, so I know it's there. This chart happens to also have a PHI consent form uploaded to it, so let's take a look at what that might be. So this PHI form, I'm going to make sure it's the right client. It is. Sometimes our charts have the wrong clients in there accidentally. And here it is. It's saying the Gloria, Gloria Ito is the DCF case manager. So it looks like there's a case manager involved with this chart, and we needed PHI for that person. Okay, that's great news. This form is filled out correctly. We're only releasing verbal information and obtaining verbal information, which is all we can do unless medical records has done differently.
okay. I'm going to go down here and see if I have Gloria's picture. I'm guessing P-H-I-I-D is going to be her picture. So, oh, again, having a problem pulling up her picture. But in, a, in an ideal world, her picture would show up and it would be Gloria's picture. Um, now I want to see if the PCP fax form for admission is down here. So I see a PCP fax form. I'm opening it. And sure enough, here is the admission PCP fax form. And it has the same doctor and the same address, just like we saw on that combined consent form. For the PCP fax form, all we're doing is just letting the doctor know the client is now in our care. So we fill out the client information here. We check off individual and family therapy, admission to the program, when they were admitted. And then down here, a little brief description. Clients now receiving services without patient therapy, Chrysalis Health, everybody signs, and the form has been faxed. Okay, so the consent piece is done. Great chart so far. Now we're going to go to the assessments. We're going to look at the bio. We're going to make sure that it has um, everything it needs in there. We're going to look and make sure that the that it's uh, justifying the diagnosis. We're going to look and make sure that it talks about family history of substance abuse and how that related to the client. Um, immunizations are up to date. Allergies, client's relationship, strengths and weaknesses. Those are just some of the things that an auditor looks like. And again, there's not much we can do with an assessment. It's already been done and signed off on. But when a chart is audited, an assess a director will always look through the assessment to get information to make sure that the rest of the chart flows with that assessment. Most importantly for a therapist would be to make sure that you're following through with a therapist with the assessor's recommendation. So if we open up the bio here for this chart under here's assessments, so I'll go up so it doesn't look so strange. Here's the assessments and here's the bio. So we're going to open it up since we're auditing the chart and we're going to see, okay, so we have a 13 year old boy. It looks like he's multiracial. He was referred by DCF, which makes me really happy because I have a DCF PHI in this chart, which is huge because now I can communicate with the referral source. If I were auditing this chart halfway through and, and I saw this, I would tell the therapist, hey, make sure you have a DCF um, PHI so you could communicate with them since they're the referral source. But this chart already has it, so we're good to go. Mother is saying that he um, has never had any history of issues until this domestic violence situation occurred. Here in client's current symptoms, it looks like he's meeting all of the criteria for P, uh, PS, PTSD. Sorry. Uh, so low mood, um, anhedonia, hypervigilance, flashbacks. Okay, so then we're going to go through all the way. He doesn't have any risk. He's saying no to substance use. Medical issues, his immunizations are up to date, no allergies, um, no developmental issues, but we do have family psychiatric history. Dad drinks a lot, and uh, apparently his drinking is something that the client reports affects him negatively. Um, here's an interesting piece that I highly recommend reading when we're auditing. This, this trauma history and support and living situations, this really is stuff that you're going to see throughout progress notes and treatment plan reviews. So you just want to make sure that that's all flowing with the chart as well. So again, our client has PTSD. It would be very weird if this trauma section was left blank, right? But it talks, it talks about why he has trauma and what that was like for him. Um, his living situation, he's currently living with his aunt because his parents are working on finishing their DCF case plan. Okay, so now we're going to social. It's going to talk about how he uh, views himself in a cult cultural and religious identity. He doesn't um, find himself religious, but he grew up in a Baptist church, and he considers himself to be normal, in quotes, but his mother is Caucasian and father is from Puerto Rico. Here we talk about, he talks about his strengths. This is important because when you do treatment plan reviews, if you want to add a goal, you can always do something that's going to add on his strengths off, or play off of his strengths. He considers himself smart, uh, which is great. So let's play off of that and use things that are going to play towards his intellectual capabilities. So our diagnosis definitely is, um, is accurate and being um, appropriately described throughout the entire assessment, so that's really good news. And in this summary of an assessment, they're going to give you a whole bunch of um, DSM-5 verbiage as to why the client meets criteria. And we just want to make sure that in the plan, 
the, ther the assessor has recommended TBOS and following the TFCBT protocol. And when you're auditing a chart, that's really important because we need to make sure that the chart is following the plan. And if it doesn't, then it needs to be justified why. So here the, the, the assessor recommended TBOS, and here's the TBOS bubble checked. Okay, so the assessment looks really good here. Um, I'm going to go, well, actually, let's get back to our cheat sheet. So we did the assessment. Everything looks great. The next thing under assessments is the DLA. So we just want to make sure that that is done, too. Um, is there a DLA here? Yep, there's the DLA. So that was done as well. The CSSRS was completed. Now, um, most of the time, supervisors are going to tell you to complete this if you have a risky, a client that's at high risk. This client did not say he was high risk. Uh, he did not admit to having ideations. But he does have a depressed mood, so the therapist really was a go-getter here and went ahead and did that anyway, which is really good. Um, he did not score high on the CSSRS. I know that because I'm secretly the therapist. <laughs> Um, so here you can see he didn't score high on it, so we're not going to have to do a follow-up. It's just answered no to both of these, and I need to make sure that there's a supervisor signature on it. So everything looks good here. And we're going to keep going down to, oh, look, there's a CATS assessment. This is huge because the client has a PTSD diagnosis. For most diagnoses, there are assessments available to you. If the assessor did not do an assessment, then when you, have to, when you see your client for the first session, go ahead and do one just to make sure that the symptoms are accurate. The assessor only gets a few hours with the client. You get one hour a week for a long time, so make sure that the diagnosis is appropriate by doing your assessments. We can pull up the assessment to make sure the client's name and date of birth is on it. We need to make sure name and date of birth is on all documents that are uploaded. And as you can see, the client is definitely experiencing some things that could be trauma related. And then also here, wow, look at all of his symptoms. They're in the threes and twos, very few ones. So he definitely meets criteria for PTSD. So again, our chart is flowing with the same uh, the same story of a boy who's experienced trauma who meets PTSD criteria. Okay, you'll see that there is a violence assessment in this chart. Don't worry about that. That's not something that we're doing anymore. I don't want to confuse you guys. All right, so let's look at our cheat sheet. We did the DLA. We did the CSSRS. Our client is not substance abuse, so we don't have HIV testing or ASAMs in the chart. HIV testing, TB screening, that's all um, assessments done by the assessor. Again, unless you change the diagnosis, if you add a substance abuse diagnosis, you would have to be the one to now upload those uh, documents. ACMs are every 30 days or less. An ACM is supposedly done in session, so make sure it is dated the same day as the session, and it cannot go over 31 days. Okay, now we're on to our treatment plan and our treatment plan reviews. The treatment plan must be done within 30 days of the bio. All Medicaid clients' treatment plans are already done for you by the assessor. The private clients are done by you, and so be sure to get them done in the first session. It's a really big problem if they're done 30 days or later, so just go ahead and get in front of that problem and do it in your first session. The treatment plans need to have one goal per diagnosis, one goal to address the DLA, and one goal for the aftercare. So let's take a look at this treatment plan and see if it was done well. Again, we kind of want it to flow with the bio, right? So we have a post-traumatic stress disorder. We have a trauma goal. Perfect. If this client had anxiety as well, we would also need an anxiety goal. But there's only one diagnosis here, so it's just the trauma the trauma goal, and then we need our DLA goal, so communication fits that. That's one of our DLA um, benchmarks. And then an aftercare plan goal. Some clients are going to have charts that are older in an audit, and they aren't going to have an aftercare plan goal because that's a pretty new uh, policy for Chrysalis. If not, then there needs to be an aftercare plan in the chart. Our treatment plans that have aftercare plan goals in them either can have the aftercare plan um, goal addressed in the treatment plan review or in a progress note. Okay, so this treatment plan review, we're going to, I mean, treatment plan, we're looking at the prescription, the service criteria here. They have the sessions, and you know what? They This assessor even put TBOS because, remember, our client was recommended for TBOS. But since the, the therapist is the one to request TBOS, 
the assessor also prescribes individual because that way the client can be seen an individual before the TBOSS request comes in. Discharge date is here. Okay, this looks excellent. Let's make sure we have all of our signatures. We sure do. So this treatment plan is good to go. It's still following the flow of the PTSD diagnosis in the chart. Um, for fun, let's look at this treatment plan review. So let's pretend this chart five months later got a treatment plan review. I go to the TPR tab. Now that I'm auditing it, I'm looking at all of these objectives here and I'm making sure that the therapist answered it as if it were a question. So did client receive psychoeducation on their specific trauma and identify four emotions experienced? Okay, well, did they? Client was engaged in the first few sessions where he received psychoeducation on his diagnosis and completed the assessments to confirm the diagnosis. Client identified the following emotions, anger, guilt, sadness, envy, objective met. Boom. So this person did a great job of answering and even describing each of the four emotions that was asked for in this objective. Here's another one. Uh, client will learn and practice five relaxation skills. Client has learned the following relaxation skills. One, two, three, four, five, six. Ooh, we went over and beyond here. He's able to practice with his mother who has also learned these skills. Client prefers relaxation, breathing, and grounding techniques when triggered, objective met. I love the way that this is written because it not only answers this objective as if it were the objective or a question, but it also makes it a unique response because it's telling me what he prefers because I want this to not look like I copied and pasted it from any other chart. I want it to be a little bit specific to the client. So he preferred these two, even though he learned all six. Okay, uh, let's scroll down because he's met all of those to this one that's obviously extended. There's extended target date, which is really important. This is about the trauma narrative. So let's see how the review goes. Client is in the process of completing a trauma narrative. Client experienced a setback with the disappointment of not getting reunified again due to the father relapsing. Client regressed, however, was able to utilize coping skills to pull himself out and now is able is stable enough to continue with the trauma narrative. Mother received her own therapy to be stable enough to her, for her to hear the